Hey, and welcome to The Cackling Jackal. I'm Leon, this is James, and today we are creating a world together. So there's quite a few different ways people do this. Um, we're kind of going with a little bit of a, one of the random methods. Um, yeah, we're going hard and fast for this. So yeah. don't expect this to be, you know, a finely crafted world. This is going to be ideas thrown on a piece of paper. 100%. Yeah, um, if you were to create a world, you probably need to go into detail in some places. This is going to be a very general kind of continent kind of thing with some interesting points, and we'll go from there. Yeah, so we've got alcohol, we've got paper, set. we've got pens and dice and pencils and We have a computer paper. if we computer. need it. I don't think there is anything else we, we nah, need. I think we're ready to go. Going. Cool. So, we're going to start by... Well, this is a method James was telling me about. I haven't done this personally, but I've, I think it's very cool. I've done this before. Yeah. I've done this twice on the same world. Yeah, uh, cool. If you've, you've played in my I have civilization played campaign. Is. And uh, basically, these are just a bunch of D6s. A bunch of little D6s. You can buy these pretty cheap if you don't have a large collection of D6s because, you know, maybe you're not a wizard. Yeah, and, true. And, or something. Or, or I guess a rogue could do with a bunch of D6s you're as well right. by Sneak high attack, levels. 100%. Yes. Um, but... These are really cool, because what we're, what I like to do is grab handfuls of them. Here you go, Leon, yep. grab some. Cool. Thank you. So we've probably got about 40 to 50 dice here. I'm taking your word on that one, but um, sure. And what we're basically going to do is we're basically going to hold them above the, above the map. Yep. And we're just going to sort of let them go. Cool. cool. And then we recollect the one Amazing. from the outside. Now, it, yeah. You might not be wondering how this, uh, how this applies to, to world building in any way, shape, or form. Go for it. Yep. Um, but this is the method I like to use because when it comes to making your own land masses, I've got a few spare spare dice over here. When it comes to making your own land masses, yep. um, often as humans, you feel like making things nice and making them, yeah, so making them look and geometrically nice or interesting. Because um, that's just what humans do. Yep. I'll collect some of the ones from just the outside here that don't belong. Cool. Yeah, it's cool. I like that. So, what we do next is we basically have a bunch of random dice on our on our map here, um, and we're basically going to use these as as the land masses. So, cool. if we grab a pen. Yeah. What we can do is obviously there's going to be a large yeah a large um, continent right in the middle, um, yeah. Which which is nice to have in a, in a fantasy map because it means you've got one nice central location for everything to be in. Yep. And then people can go wherever they want from there. So what we're going to do is. I'm just going to roughly start tracing these. Little island over here. There you go, have a go. That's cool. what we're going to do. I reckon this is a nice. Um, and don't feel, don't feel contained by the dice. Don't feel like you need to copy them exactly. For instance, these two dice here on their own, uh, you might be able to see them. Um, yep. These are sort of just little floating islands at the moment. But what you can do is, if you want to make them a little bit more interesting, just chuck more dice on the page. And now you've got a nice big island that you, yeah, can, that you cool. can do something with. Yeah, let's go. Looks a bit like Italy, the boot. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> do we want um, to have some single islands floating We can have some single islands. There's nothing wrong with having small islands. Uh, but usually this is going to be for, for the bigger land masses. So we're, yeah. we're probably going to add some tiny islands to the map later. Cool. I like um, this place here. Do this and you don't need to use all the dice. Don't feel like you need to do anything like that. Like that. Um, and what, how about we, we do this? With these two dice over here. Yeah. What if we say there's a there's some sort of continent coming off the edge of the map? Yeah, cool. I like that. We'll go through from maybe about there. Uh, I like having a continent come off the edge of your map because it makes the map feel bigger. Yeah, true. There's a whole bunch of landmass that you can't see here. It adds a little bit of mystery. It adds a little bit of, hey, yeah. maybe a character who likes the exploration stuff wants to... Go What's beyond the map. Exactly. So that could be um, your inspiration for a whole character, is that exactly. this is the well-known world and you want to find out what's beyond that. Cool. Uh, so, once we've done that, uh, yeah, we can just remove all the dice. So. Yeah, calculate the damage quickly. Oh, yes. <laughs> 2,000. Um, Good luck. 50, 60 dice. Maximum, I can get six. <laughs> Probably not going to get 2,000. Uh, you might get lucky. Very lucky. As in you're cheating. Um, anyway, so we've got we've got a pretty random looking world. Yep. Now we're probably going to refine this later. Yep. Uh, for instance, this this continent right in the middle here looks very blobby. Yeah. Uh, blo blobby is a, is the technical word word for something that looks like, <laughs> something that looks like a blob. Um, but 
later on we can sort of add some some edges, some yeah. erosion, some some things like well, that. Well, I've done a bit of map drawing before, and I often start like this, and, and then, then you go into the detail later, and it exactly. makes it really come to life. So, uh, now that we've got that done, we have a few routes we can take. We can either start working on where civilization is. Yep. We could work on where the land formations are. So yep. we can look at um, doing, you know, rivers and mountains and, and things like that. Forests. Yep. Um, it's it's really up to you. Which way do you want to go? Um, so, the, there, there's a benefit to doing it the rivers... There's well, a benefit to doing okay. it both ways. If you, if you start with the, with the kingdoms and things like that, and elements that you're going to explore in the campaign, yep. the world's going to represent that campaign. Yep. The way I personally like to do it is I like to do the rivers and the mountains first. I feel yep. like they go hand in hand, and I feel like natural civilizations form around exactly. land masses. So that, that will be a, to me, a that little bit more, more realistic, a realistic kind of approach. But you can do it anyway. It, will, it will be more realistic. And, that, and that's the way I usually prefer to do it as well, because... Yep. For instance, kingdoms are usually the borders of kingdoms and, and things like that. Are usually follow, follow rivers, and follow rivers, things. or they follow forests, or they follow, follow whatever, or so. mountain ranges, or whatever. Exactly. Anything that makes it difficult to get further, yeah, usually makes makes, the makes edge. a good border. So I guess we'll start with that. So cool. let's get rid of our gray, our gray marker. Uh, let's see, green for forests. Yep. Blue for rivers. Yep. Have you got a brownish colour? Not really. I don't have a brown. Um, you got purple or red? Orange for mountains? Yeah, orange for mountain works for me. Orange. Cool. Oh wait, do we want to keep that for deserts? All maybe right. do red for maybe red for mountains. Red for mountains. Cool. Cool. That works. Yep. So, uh, where do you want to start? Usually I like to start with mountains. Yeah. The reason I like to start with mountains is... The uh, river if runs you, off it. The rivers come off mountains. Uh, mountains sort of are really easy to dictate. For instance, we could look at this, if we wanted yeah. to get into real detail, we could look at fault lines. Yeah, true. Right? We could look at and go, okay, so it looks like maybe there's a fault line that comes off this way a bit because of this this land here. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe there's a few small islands around here and it's, there's a fault line causing... causing Because mountains occur wherever fault lines are. Yeah. So wherever two fault lines are pushing up against each other, Bit of a geometry lesson here. Not geometry. Geography, Geogra sorry. Geometry. <laughs> geometry is math. Um, whenever two fault lines push up against each other, you're going to get mountains. Yep. Um, they... or they'll, they'll, one will go down, one will go up. Whenever they slide across, you're going to not necessarily get mountains, you're going to get some valleys and things like that. Yep. Um, so if you wanted to get into that detail, you could even, you know, grab a, uh, grab a piece of paper, copy yep. it over, and then just draw where your fault lines are. Cool. If you wanted to go into super detail. Or you could yeah. just sort of look at the map and, and choose what you're just going with. Yeah, I'm going to swing it for tonight. Alright. So, uh, in that case, red for mountains. Yep. And I guess we can just do a line. Yeah, A line now. will re represent a mountain range. Yep. Um, so maybe we're going, what, do we want something over here? Yeah. Sort of curving around that way? Yeah, cool. Something like that. Yep. I reckon it'll um, be something through here. Notice that I, I didn't I didn't mind to go over the edge here. Again, we're yep. going to be transferring this to a new map at some point and yeah, cleaning definitely. things up. But this allows us to sort of look at, okay, for Follow instance, maybe we wanted a volcano in the middle of the water. True. This could be a cool place to do it. Yeah, 100%. Um, and it, you're right, that map follows the natural flow of the exactly. land. Or even so again, we're not really built in, we're not really doing the mountain range. This is, almost is the fault line in a way. Yeah. Um, so what did you want over here? I don't know, I feel like there's something through the middle there. Okay. Even if it's like a bit of like a S kind of shape. So just sort of like a, yeah. like this. To me it looks like it, like the big island and it looks like it comes to a peak yeah. in my head no, like somewhere it. in the middle For there. For some reason that reminds me of Hawaii. Yeah, I don't actually 100%. know what Hawaii I know. looks like. All I know well, is that Hawaii is quite mountainous. It is quite mountainous, but also from the movie, uh, I don't know, I watched recently. It's the, the, the newest one. Um, Disney? Yeah, it's Disney. Are you talking about Moana? Yes, Moana. Yeah. From that one, it uh, looks like a woman sleeping and I can kind of, or lying down and you can kind of see okay. her head. Knees, feet, kind of shoulders tucked in. Where, where do you, where do you get your LSD from? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you. Okay, cool. Oh. <laughs> um, I reckon there definitely needs to be another major mountain range in the main continent somewhere. Yeah. Whether so, it sort of does it like a sea bend, or maybe it goes across. Um, I don't mind the sea bend. In Australia, yeah, in Australia, like we have a mountain range called called the Great Dividing Range. True. Um, that's literally called the Great Dividing Range because it divides the, the sea and the coast. Yeah. From inland Australia, yeah. um, so we could do almost a thing like that. 
I don't mind that. I'm definitely keen on that one. We could even go, if we wanted, like, sort of, the fault line could go right across here. Yep. Man, I'm up for it if you want to go with... I like both I like I like the idea of the, the dividing range. I, I like sort of a range that sort of S's its way back and forth across here. Yeah. Right? Cool. Um, and then I guess we can say maybe there's some mountains in the in the middle of this continent. Yeah. Maybe. No, just coming sort of into view or... Yeah, just, yeah, like it's coming off the map. Yeah, like sort of just like... Just the edge of it. Maybe it's... Let's just do this. Cool. Right? Um, and then I guess we can have some mountains sort of... You don't have to do all your, all your mountains. Don't have to be ranges. Yeah. For instance, we could we could put a mountain Single mountains. just like here. Yeah. Right. Um, I like putting ones on little tiny islands as well. But we don't need to do that. Mm. I kind of feel like this, like one of these edges of this, would be almost cliff-like. Okay. Do you see what I mean? Like maybe yeah. this is like the same level as that, and this edge here is kind of like cliff like it's just been cut so almost almost off. like this this whole thing is on a, on a yeah it almost plane. Okay. goes up so in that case we can we can signify that just by doing some sh some sort of shading like thing this. down you want it yeah. along the whole thing well i feel like from i feel like this is the high point and it slopes down to like this being oh so this is all the high point that's what i was kind of thinking something like sort of yeah that's that. what i was thinking something like that give it a bit of okay cool I like that. That's a cool yeah. idea. Um, and then it would ma that make some sort of sense maybe for there to be a mountain or, or two around here. Yep. Um, and then over here, I guess we could have some mountainless islands. That's not, a, that's not an issue. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess we'll do that for now. We can always add mountains later. So I don't feel yeah. like we need to go, okay, all the mountains are done. Rivers will always flow down. down. They'll yep. always go from somewhere high to somewhere low. They often start from mountains and then... Yeah, so mountains down. or glaciers or things like yeah. that. Um, so... To be honest, this, I don't know how this fits in with this, but something's coming into there. Yeah, coming that, out it, it'll make a total, makes total sense. Yeah. The other rule is that rivers... Rivers never split. Okay. Right? Rivers, rivers always converge, they never split. They join as they, together, as they go, yes. As they go down. Yes. yes. They yes. never split. The only exception to that is when you get things like deltas. Yeah. I mean, there's more exceptions as well, but generally, yeah. But generally, it's generally uphill, not down, because everything joins yeah, exactly. in. Air to keep so, coming for together. instance, we could have a second river, sort of maybe it came from this direction down here that joins up with that one. Yep. Um, it's probably there's probably some sort of river that goes down here. Yeah, I like it. Um, I, I almost like the idea that this place is is like rock. Yeah. At least on the higher on the high ground. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's just sort of a, a cliff. Thing and then maybe this is like the only source of water up there. Um, Interesting, I like that. Yeah. To be honest, I feel like there's going to be another form of yep. some kind of river here. Whenever I get like those deep kind of cuts into a land, yeah. to me that feels like it's a river point where something's come through. And uh, ne never, well, not never, because there's always going to be exceptions. To yeah. But don't just go. Okay, here's mountain. Here's here's water. Yeah. There's no. A, right. Yeah. Um, rivers always look interesting. They always bend. They always yep. turn. Um, and it's it's really. In fact, I reckon this this probably. Yeah, it comes from something else there too. Yeah, maybe it just does like this, and it comes sort of comes from like that. Yeah, because really, all rivers is, are doing is, is following the natural flow of the land. Exactly, and then they sort of carve is, into the land as well. Yeah, it um, slowly wears away as it going. Exactly. So let's say we can put a large. Let's. What if we put a lake in the middle of this? Mm. Mm-hmm. Like, a, like a, quite a large lake. Like some, yep. something here. Such a large lake that when you're on the shores, it looks like an ocean. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You sort of look across and you go, okay, well, I can sort of see land goes off in that direction. Yeah. And it goes in, off the, in that direction as well, but yeah. does it meet up? I'm not sure. Cool. Um, so lakes are going to have water flowing, flowing to, in like, yeah. to them as well. Which makes sense. It needs to come from the mountain and it's got yeah. nowhere else to go, hence why a lake forms. Exactly. Um, you can often, depending on, don't, don't have a lake that has one input, one inlet, and then like four outlets. Yep, because otherwise it would drain. Otherwise the lake would drain out. Yeah. Um, so you can have outlets from lakes, and that makes some sense as well. Mm -hmm. For instance, we, if we wanted to, we could put like a, like a river that comes all the way through here. Yep, but you or probably need a few coming north. in across. But yeah, we need to add some more, some more lakes. Uh, the other thing you can do is sometimes you get lakes up in, up in the mountains. 
Yes. Right? So you get, for instance, maybe there's a lake in this mountain range somewhere. There's a really good right? example of that actually in um, near Cairns in Australia, where yeah. this place I went swimming, it was this cool. It's actually an old volcano that is literally filled with water. And it looked oh, that's huge. Cool. huge. It is absolutely huge. I want to go there now. Yeah. This thing is called Lake Eachim or something. But thinking of what you were saying just then, like lakes up in mountains yeah. it forms because it was just a big crater essentially when yeah, it just and, just and then water. as it slowly rained the water's got nowhere else to go so i just sort of put a little bit of a lake against this mountain here yeah and it's sort of flowing into this big lake as well which i like cool um and then i i, I am a big fan of deltas so for mm -hmm. those of you who don't know what a delta is a delta is basically when a river heads towards the coast and then sort of just before it hits the coast it splits right okay would you know what causes that? Oh, this is testing my geography knowledge. Not exactly, no. Is it more of like a land mass something coming mm. up? Or is it just that there's a land so. naturally sloped to the left yeah, and right? Look it up. I've right. got a computer. We'll find this out. And while you're doing that, I might draw some more lake. Some Go more rivers. Right, yes. Yeah, cool. So I'll read this out loud. Okay, a river delta is a landform that forms from the deposition of sediment carried by a river as the flow leaves its mouth and enters slow moving or stagnant water. This occurs where a river enters an ocean, sea, estuary, lake, reservoir, or more rarely, another river that cannot transport away the supplied sediment. So basically it's kind of forming its own little... Yeah, exactly. So the island. idea is that when, when the water of the river is hitting something that's slowing it down. Yes. Um, it could theoretically be like a, a bump in the land. It could yep. be just some slower water. Yep. But then uh, the sediment the river is carrying yes. is no longer getting carried by the slow yeah. water, meaning that it starts building up and then the river basically diverts around. Around the land around mass, the, mass and yeah. eventually gets further and further and further. So I've, I have put a delta over here. Cool. I love deltas because I, I just think they look nice. They do. Um, in fact, if you are, if you've, you played in in Edge of Civilization. I sure have. Um, Delta Delta Falls. Yes. Delta Falls is actually where a river has formed into a delta and then into a waterfall. That's pretty cool. Um, and it's a city that's built on that waterfall, which is kind of cool. I've, I haven't been there yet, have I? You no, that's in the it. Human Empire. Yeah, yeah nice. No. I kind of like that. I don't know whether this here, I kind of it doesn't make a lot of sense, but what I could see is maybe this is like the land actually bites in. As in, like, this is all ocean. Yeah, we could definitely do that. Uh, That's cool. This, this bit of land here doesn't exist. Yeah. There's an option that I kind of like. Cool. Um, and then I, I like to have a river that sort of goes across. Yeah, the whole across. Thing. It's nice to have that because it means you have a major river. A big yeah. river is really good for trade. That is true. So It also helps kind of divide your thing into yeah. a natural... So I'm actually going to sort of make this a bit thicker. Because we do know that it is a major river. Happy little river. <laughs> there we go. Cool. Um, so we probably means we need more. following your rule yeah. of having more inlets than outlets. Because right so, now we have two, one inlet and two outlets. So you know what we do? Chuck in some mountains. Chuck in small mountains. So there's a, there's a few mountains here for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, Maybe they're natural. Maybe they're not natural. Yep. And then we have basically a river that's coming out of those mountains. You can have probably, maybe even a second one if you wanted to. Yeah, I reckon you another one. Yeah, I'm not sure if I like that, but we can change it later if we need to. Yep. Um, so now I've got basically one major outlet and one minor outlet. Cool. Yep. Uh, one thing we can add in as well, if you've got, uh, we, actually next we should probably talk about the climate. True. Um, I was thinking about going to forests next, but yeah, climate's a big thing and it's going to dictate, gonna where, dictate the forest, where the forests forest and deserts and bits and pieces are. Um, so how about, what if we draw in a, like equator kind of line or something, or something okay. along yeah. those lines, we can figure out where the hottest section are and then the further away from that you get, it starts getting cooler and this, that and the other. Cool. Let's get this, uh. So, what is that, lime green? Yeah, it looks like a lime green car. So, you can My do it. My urine after I've drinking too much Monster, <laughs> too, much, too much Mountain Dew. So, every day. <laughs> um, um, you can get away with like doing this straight through the middle if you want. Um, some maps do it that way. However, you don't have to. You could literally no. have your equator on the edge. You could have your equator literally anywhere. And I think sometimes having it a little different from straight on center adds a bit of uniqueness yeah. to your map. 
And it definitely does. Realism. Also, it means that the further away the... Like, if, if the equator is, like, way down here... Yeah. That will implement that. That will influence what these islands are like. First, hundred percent, and also, also it means it'll it'll influence what these islands are. It means yeah. we could even uh, maybe if we really wanted to go that far, have some polar regions, so have some snow snow regions. That'd be pretty cool. Because then you can put in things like fjords and 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 all yeah, that sort the, of stuff. The other thing you can do is we can even do it this way. Because if you look at the lengthways, that way gives you a bit of a little bit we of color. Definitely do it. And it'll be a bit different. Yeah. Uh, you know our. our I guess our globe could be rotating the opposite that way. way. Yeah. Which if then would actually talk about technically, it. or depends on where their sun is, but you yeah. can almost have. I know, mean, I get, I get, I get, and then if they're doing that, then I guess you've got their magnetic north, magnetic south, and then, have, then everyone's maps just would just be on the side. That is true. <laughs> eh. <laughs> but where do you want to put it? I'm happy with wherever. So I am thinking. Not close. You can put it on an angle. If you I reckon put it, yeah. I reckon put it closest to a center, but not dead on. Maybe maybe through there or something. I do okay. like your angle idea. Just a bit different. Again, or we're on, talking about we're talking about all these realistic things. Yeah, right? I know. But th this, by the way, I don't know if we mentioned this. This is a map for D and D. Uh huh. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Uh, we said we're creating a fantasy world. I know, but so, yeah. yeah, so this is definitely a fantasy world. Yeah. We're talking about all these realistic rules, and having some of those realistic rules is nice because it means that, you know, your world feels real. Yeah. In saying that, though, you're right. Having some unrealistic things are cool because then you can explain yeah. why is that happening. Like, exactly. Then you've got some fantastical elements to your world. Yeah. Um, which which I think is kind of cool. So let's... What were you... You are about to say something. Well, I was thinking... I wouldn't mind... But I kind of changed my mind after because I don't... I, in my head, I don't imagine these two as... as polar yeah. islands I think of them more like tropical islands in which case I feel like the, the equator goes a bit more that way and these could be a little bit cooler however okay. I'm up for whatever you got any kind of particular ideas you're thinking hmm the other option is we go up here yeah and we have this type of thing be polar because now instead of having like this rocky island we've got this ice covered island that is true um it's an idea yeah well, the other thing is you don't even have, like if you have your equator here, your scale could be that this is only maybe not even ice. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like you don't have to have yeah, it that exactly. way. Do we want an ice island? I kind of like the idea of something being a bit cooler, something a bit more like Icelandic in yeah. terms of. And that's the thing. Okay, the thing is we don't necessarily need to have an Iceland that's far away from the equator either. That is true. Right? It could even um, yeah. Once again, fantastical elements. Exactly. You can do it if you want. Maybe you want maybe it. this maybe maybe not. Let's say we wanted this island to be to be icy. Yeah. Maybe it was once home to it, like a legendary, yeah. a, a legendary like Ice silver dragon. Or silver dragon, yeah, right? either way. Um, yeah. Any so, number of creatures. Let's see, where do, where do we want our sort of... Um, this way? Yeah, that works for me. And we'll, we'll put it on a, a, not a steep angle. Yeah. Um, and I don't think it's necessarily going to go to the edge. Oh, does it? I don't want to start drawing from here. How's that? Cool. That works for me. That I is like our, it. I'll just label it. To be honest, that helps explain a little bit kind of for us even why this would be a bit more of a rockier yeah. climate. True. Hotter section. Um, and the only source of water is the Is this the one river. river that comes from the, comes from the mountains. Yeah, nice. That'd be um, a good story element. The river yeah. all of a sudden dries up and people or, are... Or even you're looking at the fact that, okay... Maybe one of your players or one of your NPCs or one of mm. your whatever notices this place has a river but no rainfall. Interesting, right? So I mean, what, again, on an equator, you, you're going to get some 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 rainfall near the equator. Yeah. So it does make some sense, but also you could have it the other way where you know this is just a, a rocky rocky place. Yeah. And then someone notices, hey, there's water here. Yeah. There's a river going down, but I don't see any rainfall there ever. Yeah. So where's that water coming from? That is very interesting. Um, just tossing around some hooks that you could use for your game. All right, so we've got our equator. Yep. This is going to help us dictate um, a few different bits and pieces. Do we want to go into the forest next? I hope they can see that on the map. I reckon they can. Because it is quite light. They throw us draw it and we'll work off it. So I think yeah, we'll equator off. here. Yeah. <laughs> um, next, we could look at forests, or we could just look at climate itself. All right. Either way. Um, so you're going to have... Obviously, this is going to be very warm. Yep. And it's going to get cooler as it goes out. Yep. Um, so, 
Like, essentially, like, I don't want to, we could do, keep drawing tropics and things like that if we wanted to. But if I'm just going to do a quick dotted line, now, you guys probably can't see this on your map, on the camera, but we can see it. Yeah. I imagine things on this side of this line yeah. are going to be very tropical. Very tropical. Yeah. And up here, they're going to be much more... Yeah, much less tropical. You know, you're going to start getting things like pine trees and, yeah. and things like that. I guess we just start drawing forests. Yeah, let's go for it. So forests often grow near rivers. Near rivers, yes. But it's, so very, it's okay. the thing is, it's very easy as a map maker to go, okay, forests grow near rivers and then... Your whole map is just forests. And rivers, yeah. And rivers and mountains. Which is fine, I guess, if we were doing like a primitive kind of setting yeah, where there's not exactly. a whole lot of development. I imagine this is been somewhat developed. And even where it's not developed, you're going to want to have some some plains. Yeah. Right? It, it, it's very easy as a map maker to go, okay, cool. Well, there's a forest here. Yeah. And then there's a forest here. And then there's a forest here. And then <laughs> suddenly three quarters of your main continent is forest. <laughs> Um, so, what we can also look at is, th so one thing that makes the Great Dividing Range in Australia pretty cool, yep. and that's what I wanted to look at for this mountain range here, yep. um, is that the reason that it's very, uh, that one side of it is very forested, very coastal, and the yep. other side of it is very sort of Australian outback, right? The reason that happens is because the rain comes in from the coast, like yep. the, 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 the the clouds and all that sort of thing coming from the coast. Yeah. Then they hit these tall mountains. Yeah. They get pushed up. Yeah, they rain. Which means they get cooler, which means they rain before the water actually gets... Travels inland. Gets inland. Oh, um, I knew it was the fountain of knowledge. Yeah. Fountain. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. Um, so we could look at something like that for this. For yeah, this that's really cool. And that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So we could have something like this is all very dry. We do have rivers going through here, so we obviously have some 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 foliage around them, most yep. likely. Um, whether that foliage is big enough to call a forest and actually draw in our map is another question. Yep. Um, but I like the idea that maybe everything east of this mountain range is very is quite forested. Yeah. In I which case, I think we need to put more rivers in. Cool. We'll do that real quick. Let's put another delta in. I like deltas. That makes sense because it's coming from this river up here as well. Yep. I reckon something over this way too, heading out. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, nice. All right, forests. Forests. So, are we just going to represent forests by doing a Yeah, circle? basically doing a, doing a shape. Yeah, a blob. Now, all right, so let's look at the space. We have our water ledges on this way. Yep. Hmm, now we've got to think about this. So we've got coastline coming along. I imagine you would, your forest would, may not go all the way to the coast. True, but depending on what scale we're looking at, yeah, you it might not actually make a difference to the map. It would make a difference on a it's character that's down there, right? Yes. But it wouldn't necessarily make a difference on our map. Okay, do we want to leave, do, we, do you reckon we'll leave any plains or deserty areas through this side, or do you think it's... Maybe a little bit. Yeah. Um, the maybe do the forests... Again, if we're doing that whole idea that the rain gets pushed up by the mountains and rains, yep. the forests are going to be closer, closer to, to the, the mountain. mountain. Alright, well let's say we've got a forest that follows up in along here. Now this is going to be a little bit tricky to see. Now, depending on your on your players, this all this realism talk might just go completely wasted. Yeah, that's fair enough. They uh, they might completely just go. I, they don't they don't care. But maybe you've got that one character who, that one player who, who knows a bit about geography, they yeah. know what's going on, and they sort of go, hey, I see what you've done here. And um, yeah, to be honest, if they wanted to, you could even use some of this stuff for like the survival checks. So you follow the land exactly. along this way, you follow the river, you find this, you find that. Yeah. And, and it's all just inspiration. Again, yeah. we don't need to make it realistic, but having some ideas in there is, is cool. Yeah. So. I like the forest you've got going on. Do we want to continue this on down here a little bit? I reckon that whole section there would be pretty between. Um, yeah. Or should we just go through here a little bit? Oh, it's really up to you. I don't I don't mind having forests almost right up against the coast. Um, again, yeah. usually you don't get it in real life. Yeah. But I do kind of like it every now and then in my fantasy worlds. Well, let's say this. Um, let's say this forest here continues out past. And so it goes like that. Cool. And of course, you're going to have, you know, the point where the forest ends and the beach begins. Yes. Or the point where the forest ends and the trees just sort of get sparse and then there's water. Yep. Um, but 
again, this is a map. This is representing what's on there. Yeah. Again, this is this is a fantasy world. You don't need to worry about being super super accurate. Yeah. Because assuming you're running D and D or some medi medieval fantasy land, all maps that your players are going to encounter are going to be hand drawn. Yeah. Right. And they're not um, necessarily accurate to what's no. actually happening there. It's exactly. somebody's best interpretation of what they can see. They don't have satellites. No. They don't have they don't have any of that sort of thing. So they have compasses, pen, paper, and some the other fly things. spell. The fly spell. They have the, true. They have the fly you know spell. what? That does give them the advantage <laughs> over modern or um, prehistoric man. Drink break. Love it. Uh, cool. I like it. I kind of like places around this lake being quite forested as well. That would make sense to me. Too. But Especially I think I also I think I kind of like this area maybe to be the Great Plains. Yeah. No, I can right? see that. Right. So this area is almost not necessarily forestless, but. There's no big forest there that deserves being drawn on a map. Do you think anywhere that would have been forested has been cleared for cities and kingdoms at all? Which is what I'm wanting. Or do we think this is a little bit too zoomed out for that to really have had much of an effect? We can definitely do that. Um, of course, how we can also do that is just draw the forests. And then yeah, when we get to the cities, fix add it a up. city in yeah. yeah, fair enough. I think I like um, that idea better. Let's just do the forest where they naturally would occur and then let's yeah. cut stuff out after. And also... Uh, the thing about, I mean, I guess they have spells, but in medieval yeah, fantasy, they don't have chainsaws. They don't have those big mach machines that just true. plow over they're a forest. Literally, just got an axe. Yes, they've got an axe and they're chopping an things axe, down by a hand. A saw and a tree. Yeah. Um, and again, depending on how high level magic your world is, well, that's what something we'll have to talk about as well. Definitely. Um, how common is magic? Um, I think I like this area being quite forested. Maybe? Yep. We have sort of like this... For some reason this is two forests, while the one big contiguous forest... Those forests are very close, we'll probably fix that up later. Yeah. But I like the idea that... Yeah, this separated there's something by something. In, there's something in between. Yeah. Uh, and then this is mostly going to be plains, we said. Um, I, I like the idea that there's some sort of kingdom down here. Yeah. So we could, we could keep that in mind. Um, I guess we have a bit of a forest in here. And see, I always... And, and this area here will will follow along with that whole... The rain isn't getting there. Yeah. Um, the only rain, the only thing that's coming... I guess you can have a forest in the middle of this river here because that would make a lot of sense. Yes. Actually, no, that, that does make a lot of sense. So if yeah. you look at it, it actually follows the topography of the land a bit. Yeah. I like it too. It just aesthetically is pleasing. Mm. Um... Because the thing about the thing about real life worlds is, everything is dependent on everything else. Hundred percent. People people think, okay, um, I'm going to put a forest here, and mountains here, and a river here, and a lake there, and yeah. whatever over there, cliffs or whatever. But in the real world and in fantasy worlds, assumedly, yeah, everything is relative to any, everything else. So these forests are all relative to the fact that this mountain is there. Yeah. Um, and mountains are kind of the, one of the big says. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I reckon we put some sort of forest down here as well. Yep. On this peninsula. Um, and I kind of like calling it a peninsula as well. I also imagine that this back half of this island seems a bit more forested. Same, similar deal to what's happening there. Rain yep. is getting pushed up. Oh, sorry, sorry, this bottom part. Is yeah, this, I reckon, I don't know. I'm going to feel along this bottom section. Okay. It also, to me, feels like it would be less populated in that kind of sense yes i reckon these islands are less populated and like have less part. impact in terms yeah. of civilization on forests and this that and the other let me do one down here as well this, this nice little thin forest yeah so we are we going with that there's very little to no forest i reckon this? i reckon we put none yeah i reckon we cool. say this island is basically a gradient from rock to grass so the question is and we'll obviously this is or you could even go further early. and go rock to sand what would this obviously yeah mm. does this island have civilization if it does what resource do they have that has pushed them forward? exactly that's the thing um and you're going to look at things like if it is rock it could be ore it could be a really good yeah. mining place you could say dwarves yeah you definitely go with dwarves you could go with you know gnomes, deep even. gnomes yeah you can go with underdark races true maybe this whole thing is is hollow to some extent ah, um, i like it and there's people living below the rock all right let's look at some forests on this side Oh, yeah. I reckon um, the forests are going to be closer to the shore on this side, because I feel like we're getting further away from the quayer. Okay. I reckon we're going to get some rather big forests on this, though. Yeah. 
So I reckon we're going to have like this one massive forest up here. Yeah. Something like that? Yeah, nice. I like it. Um, you can go, yeah, go for it. I reckon it's a little bit on this side too, to be honest, just kind of following that. Yep. General topography. Now, generally, where there's a river, where there's a forest on one side of the river, you're going to get forest on the other side of the river. Yeah. Um, yeah. Unless there's a reason for a forest not to be there. Is that through there? Mm. Are we thinking anything from? I reckon. Forest? I reckon actually we make. And a mountain range. That, I reckon we make this whole region mountain. Yeah, I like it because that it, while the land continues, it's yeah. It's the reason why, and I reckon actually, no, I reckon the mountains continue this way because. They've only mapped this much of their continent. Okay. There's a reason why they've stopped. And I feel like the mountains is a big part of what stopped them continuing further and mapping further. Cool. I like it. Um, I also, I also kind of like having, where's the blue? Making this be some sort of body of water rather than just part of a river. Yeah, cool. I like that being some sort of like maybe a, a lake or a, or a something. Yeah, I'm thinking of this. The foresty thing. And I'm seeing similarities already with with some of the worlds I've already made. Yeah. Because um, you know that that's just what happens when you when you're doing. So let's let's fix this up. We well, said that this was going to be this was going to be water. Yep. And so was this. Cool. Well, let's just draw some mountains in a little bit along those lines because I like True. doing that. So let's go. You know, what? I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Yep. I don't care what you say. James, how dare you be so selfish? That's right. I fully agree with your opinions. Something like that. Yeah, we've got, we've got a volcano. I like it. I do like it. I was thinking that's going to have to happen soon. Yeah. Stage. Volcanoes are just cool. They are cool story elements too. Like what yeah. is a volcano there? Sure. What is attracted to a volcano? What maybe lives in a volcano? Yeah. Uh, are you going to get dwarves who harvest the, the lava from the lava? Very volcano? cool idea. I like it. Um, or is it more creature-like? Is there something else yeah. that's benefiting from... Is there like a, a salamander lord in there that... That's pretty like, cool. you know, some sort of creature that, that generates lava. A True. Great, you a greater salamander. Your lava doesn't have to be naturally no, forming. It doesn't. can be... Although, again, this one is right on a fault, so it could make yeah. sense that it is natural, but... Um, yeah. Cool. All right. Well... I mean, the, these two islands are pretty blank, but let's maybe we'll decide to fill them in after. Yeah. After we've decided where some civilizations and things are. Yeah. I reckon let's chuck a couple of deserts in. That's what I feel like. Deserts. This is. Right. Let's go with the uh, that orange color. Yeah, I reckon. Orange. Yeah. All right. I'm so gonna, I'm feeling I'm some deserts, obviously through here. I feel right near the equator, especially in this mountainous section. I feel yeah. like there's going to be some kind of. Great desert. And again, China. the thing is, uh, we, with forests, you usually have an edge to the forest for some reason. Maybe yes. it's people logging, maybe it's just where the trees yes. kind of stop or where the trees yes. haven't grown yet. Do you think there'd be um, something, a foresty land here just around the water's edge, but only just tight, or do you think that's not worth putting in? Uh, I'm, I, most, most rivers, unless they've got a reason not to, will have vegetation, will have vegetation around the outside. Yeah. Whether it's a forest or not is, is another question. Yeah. Um, I feel like this continues on actually all the way down here. I reckon that whole slide is okay. desert like. Are we going to say that this is sandy desert like? Or do you want to leave it all right. until we get further? I, I see two things with that with that island. I like yeah. the whole idea that this is all rock, right? Yeah. So let's just, to, to signify that, let's just do some. Some rock gestures. I like that boulder. It's a mm. nice boulder. When Shrek is life. But yeah, what I was saying is that deserts don't usually appear in blobs as much. Right? Okay. Usually, so forests are kind of blobs because they've got a nice edge to them. Yeah. Deserts usually sort of just are a gradient, right? From from grasslands to, to desert. To nothing, yeah. Um, like, again, we're representing it here as a blob because... Yeah. With this in our final map, we're just trying map. to figure yeah. out where we want it. So I like the idea that this this thing is... is we can even make, make it even a bit more rock. 
something like this. I can probably see that on the camera. Yeah, no, I reckon you can. Um, and then we can. I reckon we either go to sand or we go to grass. Look, I reckon sand because that. If you have grass, you could have cattle, and that would make. Do you know what I mean? I feel like. Okay. I don't know. I'm liking sand. I'm sure. liking Go when you it. said that whole very little to no vegetation. So we're just gonna just do a blob. Yeah. Go for it. I just wanted. I just did dots because I wanted something to look like. Say rock. this is rock, but it's not the edge of a landmass. Yeah. Um. Cool. 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 Uh, we said that this was. We do have a lighter green here. Yeah, I reckon it'll work. How, nice how different does it look? Not super. Uh. No. Oh, I actually, you know what, we can, we can use the yellow as planes. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, let's go for it. So we're saying this whole thing is planes? Um... Because it would, make, it would make a nice place for a kingdom. I think it is planes, and maybe if we zoom in on it later, there's... Yeah, there's bits and areas and yeah. stuff, but... So let's just sort of say... Or are we just going to say where, where it's blank, it's planes? Mm, I guess that's... Uh, that gives us a bit more flexibility, but I don't know how much more. No, let's just cover it in. Let's just okay. do it. I like it. I think at the end of the day, I want to see every, something on every part of this map. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's a nice way to know, hey, we're done. Yeah. I guess we have some planes in here. Yeah. Maybe these mountains go right to the edge of this continent. Oh, yeah. I like it. And I kind of like the idea of having, like, some mountain peaks just sort of just poking out, out of the water. water. Yeah. Like, not islands. Yeah, but just... Right? Just... There's just, no there's no flat surface on them. No, it's just yeah yeah yeah. yeah I understand what you mean with that one. That's cool. Uh, that creates a few things actually. First of all, it creates a, tra a travel issue. Yes. Right. Um, although again, people are going to be using the river when they can. Yeah. But it also but creates it, a dangerous area in the water here. Yeah. So let me do something like that. Yeah. Now the question is, what do you feel like you want to put in this side? Do we want a plains? Do you want it to be a bit more rocky? Um. Well, it's gonna be yeah. Okay, here's the thing, you're going to have to have some sort of special circumstance that is causing a forest to grow right next to a desert. Yeah. Right? Like, for instance, here, I imagine there's some sort of gradient going on. Yes. Right? Um, where it's not forest, it's not desert, it's not necessarily plains, but it's... You know, yeah. It's somewhere in the middle. Um, also, again, if we looked at this line, it's going to be cooler up here. Yeah. Do we want desert there or do we want some sort of tundra? Well, I wasn't thinking de desert necessarily, but, um, and what do you mean by tundra? A bit more of an icy? Tundra, thing? yeah, we could have, yeah. Some, have, some, have some snow. I reckon, some of that, I reckon that light blue. Light blue? Is it going to show up very different to the blue? Yeah, yeah different enough. Okay. I think that, well, you got this, you got the drawing. Um, yeah, so I guess, you know what, I'll just, I'll just sort of shade it. I won't actually do a blob for it. So this is, this is Tundra. I guess, do we do that like everywhere? Um, I reckon this is planes in here. Okay, so obviously just as from a logical point of view, how do you think we get then, a Tundra here with yeah, planes elsewhere? Probably got, we got I'm more for saying we got a, a, a story point. That's, oh yeah, that's cool we me. could do either or. Um, um, but I, I, just on the other side of the river, I reckon we just have a bit of planes there and that goes into Tundra. Yeah. Um, same sort of thing over here. That seems a little close because you're on the inside of that. All right, so. So next, I think we just go with, I think more, more tundra up here. Yep. I like the idea that this, so this is, this is going to be fresh water coming in here, right? Yeah. And it's going into a salt water thing. Ah, uh, right? yeah. I kind of like the idea that in the winter, some of this freezes up, but not yep. all of it, right? So just the, the fresh water part. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that happens in real life, really. Hey. Yeah, that's right. Um, we can also put some some like some floaty ice ice bits out here if we want to. If we want to have like a really cold area. Yeah. Um, we'll we'll look at that when we cool. Look look at our world. So if having that is really cold, that's got to be colder. That has got to be colder. Yeah. Um, so, so I like the idea that we basically make the whole thing cold. Is there yeah. any reason not to? Yeah, that works for me. So maybe it's like an ice forest or something. Could be an ice forest. Or some kind of magical tree. I was, I, was, ice. I was immediately thinking about just like the snow covered trees. But yeah, you could do something magical with it as well. Yeah. Um, 
that everything else is frozen, but once they walk into that forest, it's still what? Mm, no, it's fine. Now, what were you going to say? I was just thinking, so you know how I've done my, my Jackal deck of many things? Yes. Yeah. Just search it up on the channel if you want to have a look at it. It's great. Um, it's basically my custom deck of many things. Yep. You know what the Woods card does in, in that deck? Uh, you'll have to remind me. Cool. What it does is, uh, where you are, it basically summons over the course of 24 hours a two mile wide forest. Wow. Right? Yeah. So whatever's there, whether hey. it's a city, whether it's, whether it's ice, whether it's in the middle of the ocean, whether it's whatever, mm -hmm. it just conjures up this basically almost perfectal, perfectly circular. 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 Yeah. This almost perfectal circle. Would you like a hand? <laughs> <laughs> almost I've had too many perfect minutes. circular um, forest. Uh -huh. That's what I'm trying to say. Circular. Yep. And, and and then over the course of the next week or something, a um, very, very powerful fae inhabits the forest. Is that the actual card that over the next yeah, week? Yeah, that's, that's, that's the card. Wow. Yeah. Um, which uh, maybe it's at the end of the 24 hours. Maybe it's that soon. I can't remember. But yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, we could put that somewhere in here if we want. I like that idea. So just a circle. Yeah. We could put it in the middle of the ocean. We could put it anywhere we want. Just a circle of the forest. ocean. All right. Because it happen, it ha the, the forest spawns just wherever you are. So I, I imagine things like maybe you're in the middle of a city. Yeah. And then suddenly, over the next 24 hours, these trees just grow everywhere in the city. All right. Um, so that makes more sense. But if you're saying it's in the, in the well, ocean, like, how does that work? Maybe someone, maybe someone drew from the deck of many things on a boat. Yeah. And then the trees, oh, the trees, trees spreading spread yeah. off the boat, but how do they spread off the ocean next to well, it? Or is like an interlattice so kind of floating forest? Yeah, kind of. Like, you could do it any way you want. The two, the two things that I thought of when I originally wrote it yeah. was that, first of all, it would just sort of spawn land with it. Yes. Right? So basically create just a, a forested island that has this bay in the middle of it. Yeah. Um, the other idea I had was that it would grow like a, like a kelp forest under the water. Ah, right. it's never specify grow. what kind yeah, exactly. of forest. Exactly, it, it creates a forest on the boat, bottom of the ocean floor, which would naturally be kelp, coral, all that sort of thing. Cool. Just an idea we could put somewhere if we wanted to. Yep. Anything else um, we want to add to this world, or are we thinking it's looking I pretty think good we're pretty to pretty much begin with? done. We add some more planes over here. Yeah. Um, in the middle here. Uh, I don't know, we'll figure that out. I reckon planes in the middle. Planes in the middle? Yeah, it okay. makes sense. And we can always change it later if we need to. True. A little bit of planes there. Nice, happy uh, little planes. The, the, the thing that we haven't done here is things like hills and things like that, but I imagine they're kind of inferred. Yes. I think that's... Do we, I don't think you'd see hills on no, a scope of this scale. Uh, what are we doing here as well? More All right, desert? so... I reckon combination of desert and planes. I reckon planes go here. Yep. And desert goes on the other side. I reckon a little bit of... Planes there, mm -hmm. and then I'll sure, do it. to separate the forest. Yeah, and then I'll do it. Cool. So what we've done is we have left these two islands blank. Yep. We could even in the future just remove the islands entirely. That it's is totally true. Optional. Um, and also we've left this place with a little bit of geograph geography on it, but yeah, we're gonna. Th this is part of a, a bigger continent that goes off the map. Yep. And I Some feel like these two are going to be our main focus. Yeah, and then this thing's well, going to be yeah. interesting. Sorry, the, this area here, with a little bit up there, this is our main Yeah, uh, And triangle. I think there's going to be a kingdom here, yep. to some extent. I think here we're probably going to have some sort of other kingdom. Yep. Um, which isn't going to be so detailed in this map. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's... Yeah, I actually... I like the idea of this having some kind of political power. Yeah. Despite it not looking like it's got much... There's going. a few things we can do with it. Yeah. There's a few things we can do with it. Cool. Um, so, last thing. Let's do that. Yeah, that works for me. Um, cool. Well, thanks for watching. This is going to be, I guess this is going to be part one. Yeah, part one. Part one of world building on the flow, on the flow. On the, on the I was, fly. I was trying to say on the fly and on the go at the same time. I like your trial, but. Um, yeah, on the fly. I've had, I've had too many drinks, but I'm going to keep drinking. You haven't even had that many. But True. we'll just yeah. Um, so I guess we can I guess we can show this to the camera. Uh, we're gonna add some shadows on it. Maybe show it to this camera. Yep. So that's our world. Um, thank you for watching. I guess we're gonna do a part two. 
Yep, I think um, part two will start actually filling this world out and actually giving it some people to live in it. This one's whole yeah. this whole video is basically being just getting the, the natural lay of the land, how it would be without civilization in it. And now we're going to chuck some civilizations in and see how they would affect the landscape, this, that, and the other, and really bring this world to life. I like it. Cool. All right. Well, uh, this has been James and Leon. Yes. This has been the Cackling Jackal. Thank you for watching. Uh, let us know if you like this because we might do more of it. Yeah, definitely. Um... I had a lot of fun. I had fun too. Yeah. Uh, so I guess we'll see you next time. Cool. Bye. See ya.